everybody, this is Miriam Shulman, and I'm going to show you how I work on an actual watercolor commission. I was commissioned to paint these three girls. I photographed them at Rye Beach, um, Playland at Rye Beach, and it was a beautiful day. And here I am laying in my uh, flesh tones, which I like to always start out with. Um, cadmium red and yellow ochre and notice how I don't stop at the skin I continue the color into the hair and into the sand and that keeps uh, the the face and the hair from looking like a, a wig was just put on and the figures that way don't look like they've just been collaged onto the background for the sky I generally like to use cerulean blue and I threw in some other blues in there and to create the effect of clouds all I did was just blot with tissue paper. Okay so one of the I always tell my subjects to wear white one of the girls was wearing a pink top so I put in the pink top and now I'm just laying in some shadows which are just a mixture of uh, blue and burnt sienna. I had to wait for the initial pink to dry before I put in the polka dots. And now I'm just adjusting some of the shadows, putting in the eye color because they have such dark eyes. And I want to see that right away. Now I'm just putting in um, the trees and I let the tree color go right into the hair again just to help harmonize and unify. Notice how this dark brown color is going to lighten quite a bit and I'm going to have to go back several times to darken but that's okay because that will give me that layered effect that hair has that not every strand of hair is the same color. Okay, so you can see the photograph on the left that I'm working on. I did take my own photograph for this and I'm just trying to uh, model her features a little more closely to the photograph keeping things light and working from light to dark. And generally I build up these layers with burnt sienna or brown matter. Don't get too heavy with the eyebrows on the first go. Here I'm putting in the darks. I'm putting in the um, shadows between the lips and the shadows around the eyes, making the eyebrows a little darker. But you see I don't fill them in because I don't want it to look drawn on. I don't get worried about things getting too heavy. If they get heavy, I just blot just a little bit. Putting in the little dark shadows around the hands and the neck. And here I am emphasizing some darks in the hair. All right, the little baby. Oh, now one thing I wanted to point out. I, I didn't paint the whites of the eyes yet. I do go back and paint that. You'll see me doing that later. I never leave the whites perfectly white, and I will also go back and darken the teeth because that shouldn't be white, white either. is just to get the light and dark contrast going. I use a lot of blue in the hair because I've already put down brown so you can put down blue to darken the hair. And I'm modeling this girl's face. You see how light that flesh tone dried? Now I'm just darkening it with some uh, raw upper and doing the same on the rest of her flesh tone. She has a bit of an olive skin tone so just putting in her eyebrows and see how I use a tissue for my right hand if I don't do that I end up with uh, tracking paint into the sky so the tissue just keeps the areas I've painted clean again using either um, either scarlet lake or brown matter to define the rosiness in her face putting in definition into the white dresses by applying the shadows. Okay, so you see with the baby I'm just putting in the dark. 
are because I think I used a little bit of Indian red to give a natural tones there. I mean, they all have black hair, but in the sunlight you want to have some lights and the hair does look a little reddish in the side. Modeling the arms, putting in a little more darks in the dresses. So I have to go back many times to put the shadows in because as the watercolor dries, it does lighten, and then you sometimes see that it's not exactly what you wanted it to be. So I just keep going back again and readjusting. In fact, even when this video is over, my and my painting may not be completely done. I may decide that I need to... All right, so I think that's the bridge in the distance. That's New York. What bridge is that? Verrazano? I'm not even sure. Whitestone. All right. I had a little trouble trying to decide what color shadows to use here, but I think I'm happy with what I did. Just trying to give a little definition to this blouse. I don't like things that look cartoony. The hands are like a second portrait. This is the baby's hands. And um, I'm just adding a little white acrylic paint. I don't normally use white acrylic paint when I do watercolor portraits, uh, but I decided I wanted, I felt like experimenting with this one. So I'm just protecting her face again with the tissue. Remember I told you I don't want to get any drops of that brown hair on her face. Okay, she's pretty much done now, now that I got her hair done. I was really happy with the way she came out. And I decided just to model the baby just a little bit more. Putting a little bit of white around her dress. I'm not even sure if I did the whites of the eyes yet. I think I said they're still white. See, I put the little white, not just on the... It happened so fast, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I put the little white in the eyes to make it look, make them sparkle. Darkening the, the nostrils. And I really do have to go back and darken this hair, so I think that, that's what I do last. Just modeling her face. Now with children, you really don't want to overdo it because the more you paint them, the older they're going to get. I mean, this girl is, I think she's 11 or 12. I don't want to make her to look like she's 20. So the last thing I decided to do was to put in texture for the sand. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I like to use kosher salt for that. And there's a lot of blue in there. I'm just splattering. And this is my last step. Just about done. All right, thanks for joining me. I hope the parents love it as much as I do. And join me for some more videos here at Shulman Art on my YouTube channel. And I also teach online classes. If you really want to get to learn some more of my techniques, I'll show you how I paint in real time, not fast forward all the time. It's slow so you can really see, and I tell you every color. And that's at shulmanart.ning.com. So I hope to see you in a future class.